Hallelujah. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously. Somebody insults you. Don't turn around and insult them back. You know why? Because God's listening. And if you don't insult them back, treat them right, then God's going to bless you because you understood. You walked in the light and God's going to see to it. for joining us today. It's our continual prayer that something has blessed your heart or even changed your life as you listen. It's our vision to share the healing love of Jesus Christ with all who will hear. Would you consider helping us through partnering with us through your giving? Your gift of any amount will help share the gospel of Jesus Christ through this broadcast, Healing the Brokenhearted. And as a special thank you for your gift of $20 or more, we will send you a copy of The Healing Station. Please visit our website at ApostleLarryHearing.com or you can find us on social media. Thank you. That's just tasteful, right? Roll this care on God. Okay, Lord, I'm rolling this on you. I'm not going to let it uh, um, uh, put a damper in my heart. And then James 4, James chapter 4 says, still dealing with the way, how do we get this grace? James chapter 4 says, verse 6, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he said, God resist the proud, he give grace to the humble. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, purify your hearts, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Humble yourselves in the sight of God and he shall lift you up. Don't speak evil of anyone, right? So he gives a lot of things that we can do. So how to apply this humility and then Luke 18 gives a, a prayer how when we approach God, approaching God's throne is so important when we pray, right? We're approaching the throne of grace, but there's still a particular way in which you approach the throne of God with respect, right? And with humility. So one, the proud man went and began to point to his, his righteousness, right? And the other went and pointed to his weakness and his frailty. And when he approached the throne with his frailties, he brought, God brought grace. God gave him grace. He said, Lord, just be merciful to me, a sinner. Stood afar off. He couldn't go close to the throne. Didn't even feel worthy. God be merciful to me. So he went down to his house justified. But the other man, he came. He was so confident. He went to the went there before the Lord, and there he was, right there at the throne, at the altar, telling the Lord how good he was. So he didn't get any grace. Thanks of God. So when we approach God, we can't approach to Him how good we've been, right? Or how bad somebody else has been, right? We don't do that. We simply approach the Lord and ask him for mercy. And as we do that, we can approach and we can receive from God. Hallelujah. And then Peter says, grace and peace comes through the knowledge of God, right? And of our Lord. So these, these are just some ways that you, you've heard. But grace is what we need. Now God wants to give grace, and he's going to give grace here today. Some of you are going through some things, and it's impacting you in a negative way, but the Lord said he's going to give grace today. But he wants us to know so that we can continually receive grace from God. Isn't that right? There's a way we receive grace from God. God is, God is to be revered and respected and honored, right? He's, he's, he's the king of glory. He's, he's, he's all good. And so you don't approach him 
like you, 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 you all, you know what I'm saying? You, you don't approach him like that. God, somebody say, he understands. Yes, he does understand, but you're not going to get the grace that way. That's the point that we're making. There's a way that you get grace. No, he's not going to condemn you if you go and fussing at him, but you're not going to get the grace. You need grace, somebody. Isn't that right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Grace. And there's so much grace available for us. I mean, it's, it's so much grace. There's so much grace available. And the Lord is so good. He wants so much to pour it on. Just, just to pour it on. Strengthen us with might by his spirit. He, he's, he wants to do it. This is his, his desire. You don't have to talk him into it. I mean, he, he wants to do it. That's his nature to do it. And so he was going to pour some grace on us today. Amen. So what do we do based on this year? So, oh, so you say, Pastor, okay, you, you told me that... Uh, you know, you got on my case about faith. You need to kind of have a little attitude adjustment, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. You don't, you don't have to go back and see how bad you, you were, you know, because that might not look too good. But if, you just, but if you just start from the day and say, Lord, I, I know my attitude's been rotten, but... I hear the man of God talking from the word of God. And I need your grace. Because sometimes I feel like I'm about to lose it. I, I need your grace. And so he's telling me how to do it. Humble ourselves in the sight of God. Don't just say anything. But listen. What to do? Psalm 100 says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Be glad in the Lord. Isn't that right? God is good. We're his people and the sheep of his pastor. So he said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Thing, and his truth endures throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Serve him with a glad heart. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I'll bless him at all times. I'll bless him when nothing in me feel like praising him. When everything in me makes me feel, I feel angry, I feel upset, I feel like, but, but he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Commit to blessing the Lord. There's something about, yes, go ahead, praise him. There's something about the sacrifices that cost you more. That's better. You, you, you know, when, when, you, when you can praise the Lord because you just, just got a big check, you know, that's okay. And the Lord, you know, he received that. But what's better than that is when your flesh is crying out and want to say everything else but praise the Lord. When you bless him at that time, that's a sacrifice. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 The Hebrews 13 says we ought to go outside the camp bearing his reproach. Offering unto God the sacrifice of thanksgiving or the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. So he said, I'll bless the Lord at all time. And then 37, chapter 37, Psalm, in first nine verses, he says something like this. Don't fret. Trust in him. 
Delight in him. Commit your way to him. Rest in him. Cease from anger. My God, come on, let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's trusting God, you see. That's trusting God with your life and trusting God that he's going to do the right thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what the Bible said. That's how Jesus went through. But Jesus, he committed himself to God who judges righteously. You, 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 to have God as a righteous judge, you are assured in your heart that God's going to do the right thing by you. Hallelujah. No matter what others may do. Isn't that right? So he committed when they, when they, they insulted him and reviled him. The Bible says he reviled not again. He wouldn't turn around insult for insult. Hallelujah. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously. Somebody insults you, don't turn around and insult them back. You know why? Because God's listening. And if you don't insult them back, treat them right, then God's going to bless you because you understood. You walked in the light and God's going to see to it. I had my... I had a, my brother who hadn't been too long got saved. He was telling the story. And he said the boss heard he got saved. Looked like the boss was. He was already a little bit rude. But he looked like he got worse. When he got saved. And he tried him. He tried him. And he said he was. He knew he was trying him. He got, and he said he made him so mad he didn't know what to do. He, he was real mad. And so he just. He had to go to the bathroom and cool off. He was so mad. While he was there at the bathroom, he went to pray. He said, Lord, give me some help. He said, I know what he's trying to do, trying to provoke me, because he heard that I was saved. He said, God, I don't have it, but I ask you to give me grace, not to say anything out of order. Went back. God gave him grace. He didn't say nothing. And after the service, after the work day was over, he went on home. He prayed some more. That next day, that boss walked up to him and he apologized. He said, Earl, I'm sorry. I know my attitude wasn't right. This was the boss, man. Look at somebody and say, you, you, you got to know how to handle that boss. <laughs> you may be looking at that boss saying, he know I'm a Christian and so do, 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 do. And the Lord get him, you know, but no, God might not get him, right? <laughs> God might not get him, right? God might be trying to teach you something, but if you commit your way to God, hallelujah, he'll fight for you. He'll fight for you, hallelujah. Who glory. He'll fight for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He'll fight for you. Glory to God. Then he brought to me, to my mind, Hannah. As he brought Hannah to my mind, remember Elkanah's wife, other wife? She could have children, but Hannah couldn't. As far as Hannah was concerned, she was cursed. Barren. Couldn't bear children. That was a bad thing. Man. And so she just kept nagging her, nagging her, picking at her. And you know, when you already sore about something that you can't help, and somebody nag you, rubbing it in, that can be rough. But the Bible says Hannah went to the Lord, and she poured out her soul before God. Priest looked at us, oh, woman of Belial, Belial, what you drunk, what, what lady? <laughs> and she said, no, 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 my Lord, I'm not, I'm not a woman of the devil. No, 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 I, I, I'm a woman of a sorrowful heart. Ah, glory to God. So he, he was slow to get it, but when he heard that, he said, you go in peace. 
And the Lord grant you your petition. But what the Lord shared with me, he said, this is what he said. He said, something good can come out of a bad situation if we follow faith and a right attitude and response. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what come out of Hannah's situation. It was Samuel. Samuel was one among few that called on the name of the Lord. And he went down in history as one that called on the name of the Lord. A prophet and God wouldn't let none of his words fall to the ground. And God was telling me, he said, something good can come out of a bad situation. He said, if, he can take, if we re remember to have the right attitude and response, you and I don't know what God can do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because God is good. And then he brought to me Joseph. He said, Joseph could have cursed God right in the dungeon. And never went to the palace. But he didn't. Treated wrong. But he had the right attitude. See, when you trust your life to God, you got to know that God's going to do the right thing. I don't care what others are doing, right? God will do the right thing. And when that time came, hallelujah, I don't care how many had gone up before him, and I don't care who forgot him. God fixed it, hallelujah, so none of those soothsayers and all the king's magicians, couldn't, none of them could interpret the dream. Why? Because God kept it from them. Because he wanted to elevate Joseph. And no blessing was going to be withheld from that man because he governed himself right in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he went on further and began to tell me about David's character towards Saul while he was constantly trying to hurt him. It was what Saul needed. He said, he said, David's character towards Saul while he was constantly trying to hurt him was what Saul needed to see to be convinced that David was to be king. Yeah. It was when David, when Saul was convinced that he was a better man than he was. That's when he said, now I know you're king material. Now I know. You could have killed me for what I've done for you, but you wouldn't do it. You're a better man than I am. You deserve kingship. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. He brought all this to me, hallelujah. You see, God, God's looking for some character in our lives, saints. Yeah. You know, he's looking for some character in our lives. It ain't no problem for God to deliver us out of situation, but, but it can be a problem for him to get this character, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it takes cooperation, isn't that right? It takes cooperation. And finally, in this Bible, it talks about these Hebrew, or these faith hall of famers. And the writer of this chapter lets us know faith sees what others can't see. Faith enables one to walk closely with God. Faith enables believers to endure many difficult situations. Faith enables believers to obey God when they don't know their way. Faith enables believers to take risks. Faith enables believers to refuse the pleasures of worldliness. Faith without faith. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he's a rewarder. Them that diligently seek him, seek the Lord while he may be found. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this day. 
Thank you for your word, Lord. You deal with us after your kindness and after your tender mercies. Thank you, Lord God, for showing us your way. In the midst of what the world teaches, showing us your way. I thank you, Father. I ask, Lord God, that your blessed peace would rest upon this body. Your strength, Lord God, will be upon us now. Let there be a resolved will to refrain from treating others the way we are being treated. Let there be a resolved will that we will forgive so that we can be forgiven. Let there be a resolved will that our lives are committed and will commit to God. He's the righteous judge. He said, vengeance is mine. My God, I will repay. So whatever we need to do, Father, by our brothers and sisters, even by the world, Lord, let us do it. With the assurance that our God is with us. You will never leave us now, nor forsake us. Somebody, let's give God some praise in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And let us stand together, if you will. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's an old hymn that says, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. I want you to sing that with me when George gets to the, I think I seen George, didn't I? Yes. Praise the Lord. If you feel that way, if God has spoken anything to your heart as you listen to his word, make a commitment in your heart toward him. You can make a commitment and no one can see you're making a commitment right where you're standing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We need you this hour, Lord. When we look at the news, when we look at the world news, when we look at the U.S. news, when we look at the local news, everywhere there's turmoil, everywhere there's violence, everywhere, Lord God, there are acts, Lord, of divine. God, there, 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 there's so much going on, Father, when we look, and it can appear that there's no safety, but Lord God, it's a time when evil is rampant and increasing, but right in the midst of these times, you spoke about them, Lord. And, but he that will endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We will endure in our mind, our hearts will be focused upon the Lord. And we thank you, Lord. And we're going to go before the throne of God. To those of you that are watching me by way of television, I want to say to you that Jesus cares for you. More than any words can ever say. Christ died for us. Died for our sins. He went to the cross. Took upon himself the sins of humanity. Died and was buried and he rose again. If that isn't love. If that isn't love. Oh, if that isn't love. God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him would not perish. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. If you're watching me by way of television, you just happen to turn it on, you or backslide, or you just, you're not saved. You've been around religion. You've been around the churches, but you're not saved. But you heard the word today about Jesus' love. 
I want to ask you a personal question. Would you let Jesus come into your life? Will you turn your life over to Jesus Christ? There's a day of judgment coming and God wants to preserve you. He wants you to spend eternity with him. You can have Christ. He'll come into your life if you will pray this prayer with me today. Pray with me, bow your heads if you will. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Yes, that's it. Say it. I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he was buried and he rose again. Took my sins upon himself. I want to be saved. I want forgiveness of sins. Because I want to spend eternity with you, Lord. And I open my heart right now. And I ask you to come in. Save me. Make me your child. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. That's going to be open in the last day. Write my name there, Lord. I'm giving you my life. Come in and save me now. Let me be yours from this moment on. Give me the strength and the grace to live for you. And I'll serve you for the rest of my life. I thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayer. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Now if you prayed that prayer today, it doesn't matter if you were a backslider. If you've never invited Jesus into your life, you've been around religion, you've been around people that were saved, but you've never let Jesus in. Today is your day. I want you to, and if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to pick up the phone and call me. The number's there on the screen. Just say, Preacher, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And we're going to be praying for you. We're going to be praying for you. That God will channel you in the right direction. And preserve your life. Too. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for his goodness. And we thank him for his mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As 